Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D Tutorial 3D. In the last video, we created our first window and we have shown it to the user. And that works fine, except the window is highly unresponsive to our advances. So this is a problem. Why are we getting this? Well, remember, I told you two things about Windows. Number one, Windows is about Windows. Number two, Windows is about messages. But in order to understand messages, you have to understand something called event-driven programming. So, if you've gone through my C++ series, you will understand this is the game loop, right? This is how games generally work. They just, they spin this loop many times a second, like 60 times or 100 times a second. And they're constantly spitting out frames at hopefully a constant rate. And uh, this doesn't depend on whether there's any input or whether there's any change in the game state. It's just constantly going to spit out frames. Now let's contrast this with something like Notepad. Notepad, when you're not doing anything, when you're not clicking on it or typing, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It's not processing any frames. It's not redrawing itself. It's just a static window. And when you click on it, when you bring it to the foreground, well, then it will change its appearance. It'll redraw parts of its uh, UI. But again, it's going to go back to sleep until you do something like type into the window. And when you type, it is going to get events, keyboard events, and it is going to process them by putting data into its buffer, into its data buffer. And because the data buffer has changed, it's got to update the view on that data. So it is going to redraw this part of its screen. And that's how it works. Mostly, mostly Notepad is sleeping, waiting for an event. And I mean, even this blinking cursor here, this is controlled by a timer event. So it sleeps until it gets an event. And the event might be a, it might be a click, it might be a keystroke, it might be a timer event that will tell it to, you know, redraw its, uh, this cursor here. And this is very efficient, right? Because if you're not doing anything in Notepad, you don't need to redraw the screen, you know, 60 times a second. Uh, of course, you couldn't do this in general with a game because games, even if you're not doing any input, usually it's a simulation and things are moving around of their own accord, AI and stuff like that. Now, Windows was originally written mainly with applications like Notepad and Microsoft Visual Studio and Word in mind. So it is inherently an event-based system. And what the Windows messages are is they're just events. All right, now with that information under our belt, let's take a look at how we process messages in Windows. Uh, so here is, we got two sides. We got the Windows 32 side and the app side. Uh, at the Windows 32 side, it's Windows is managing a bunch of data for your window, including a queue of messages. And what happens is when you do some stuff, when you move the mouse, when you do a mouse click, Windows is going to process that input and it is going to put those messages in that order onto your queue. Then what you do is in your application, when you're ready, those messages will just keep stacking up. When you're ready, you call get message and you will pull one of those messages off of the queue. And then you can do some processing on that mess those messages, whatever you like, really. Uh, there's one function, Windows API function that you generally call called translate message. And we'll get into this a little bit later, but basically what it does is uh, if the message is a key down message, uh, it will generate an additional um, WM car message and put that on the queue. We'll talk about that later. The most important one that we're going to be calling here after get message is dispatch message. And again, this basically passes the message back to the Windows 32 side. And what Windows 32 does is it says, okay, now we've got to handle this message. Now in every window, you are going to have a pointer to a Windows procedure. This might be a little familiar to you, because remember, when we defined our Windows class, we also defined a long pointer function Windows procedure, uh, and we set that to be the default Windows procedure. All right, but in general, you are going to set that to your own procedure that you define. So what we're saying here is that Windows of this class will have this behavior. And by extension, that means that that also defines their, uh, their appearance because the behavior of the draw of handling messages like the draw message will control the appearance of the window. So basically you call dispatch message, Windows API checks the window, sees what the pointer is in there, and it will pass that uh, message onto 
your Windows procedure. Generally, your Windows procedure will then process messages that it is interested in, and after it has processed anything that it wants to do, it will also call default Windows procedure to get the default behavior for all those messages. Default Windows procedure, very important because there's probably around a thousand Windows messages and uh, you don't want to have to implement all of them. So for the most part, you're just going to get the default behavior and you're only going to add some a little extra something something on top of that when you want something other than the default behavior. All right, now let's get to the code. Now, the first thing we're going to do is like I showed you in the diagram, we have to call get message. So what you do with a new Windows function, you look it up on MSDN, get message takes four parameters. First one is a pointer to a message. Next one is the handle to the window that we're going to be retrieving messages from. And the last two are filter values to filter what kind of messages you want to get. So first things first, let's, uh, let's talk about what these are. The point of the message is basically there's a message structure that holds the message data and you pass a pointer to that structure to get message and get message will fill your structure. Now the handle to the window, we set this to null. And the reason why is because if you pass in null, uh, then it will get message for any window that belongs to the current thread. So we're just wanting, we want to get all messages regardless of what window they come from. So we pass in null here. Uh, now let's take a look at what the message structure is. It's got a bunch of stuff in here. It's got the handle to the window that the message is for. It has a unsigned int, which is the message. This gives you the message number, which tells you what type of message it is. This is the most important part of the message. And then you've got two parameters here, W param and L param. And they're just two 32-bit values. And what they actually mean depends on the message. So it's definitely, it's completely context dependent. They mean completely different things for different messages. And then you've got a timestamp for the message, uh, point and L private. So point, apparently you can get the position of the cursor for every message. Every message you receive, you can get where the cursor was at that time, uh, which might be useful, but I don't, I don't actually use this one. And the other thing is a private. This one is basically don't touch it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with us. So that is a message structure. Now this filter min and filter max allows us to uh, specify a range of message numbers that we want to pull off of the queue and we want to ignore all the other ones. Uh, but we want to process all messages. So if we set them both to zero, we'll just get all message numbers. Now the last thing is the return value of get message. This is also very important. If get message retrieves a message that is not a quit message, then the value is going to be non-zero. Uh, if it retrieves a quit message, it returns zero. And uh, if there's an error, it's going to return negative one. So basically, uh, all we need to do is check if the return value is greater than zero. And if it is, we keep going. But if it is zero or less than zero, that means it is time to GTFO. All right, with all this Win API information on our belt here, let's write our first message pump. So again, you're going to have your message structure where your messages are going to be filled into. And then we want to do a while loop. We want to continuously process messages, get message, um, as long as we're not quitting. So we go, what well, we give up pointer to our message null pointer for the window because we want to handle messages for all windows and we don't want to filter messages. We want that unfiltered good stuff. And as long as the return value is greater than zero, we are going to translate message, not accelerator. There we go. Translate message. We pass it a pointer to our MSG. Gotta love that MSG. Remember, or not remember, but uh, take a look at this. It's a constant pointer. So this is telling us that translate message will not modify our message, but it will generate auxiliary messages in certain cases. Uh, we'll get into that later. Then we got to go dispatch message. And this one is what's going to pass our message along to the window proc for the window that belongs, that is related to this message. And there you go. There's your message pump couldn't be easier. Let's run that. Again, we've got our window, but now we can move our window. Uh, we can't resize it because I didn't enable that ability, but I can minimize it and I can maximize it and uh, I can close it. Only if I close it, 
Notice that our program isn't actually closing. Uh, we, the window's gone, but our process is still running. We've got to stop it with the debugger or we get that zombie process again. So again, remember, we are setting the Windows procedure to the default procedure, which has default behavior for all of the important uh, Windows messages, including Windows message close. But the thing about the default procedure is it doesn't know whether you want to quit out of the whole application or whether you just want to close that one window. Maybe you have multiple windows. I mean, that would be pretty annoying if you close one window and it exited out of the whole application. Uh, so Windows procedure doesn't assume your application's uh, status there. And uh, so you have to define that behavior if you want it. So let's define a custom Windows procedure. This is the signature that your Windows procedures must have. Uh, it's going to return basically a 32-bit integer value. Uh, you have to define the calling convention to be std call because that's how Windows likes it. And this is going to be called from Windows 32. Name is anything you like. And it's got to take these parameters. It's got to take a handle to the window that it'll be processing the message for. Because remember, a single procedure can be used for multiple windows. It's used for all the windows of this class. Uh, then it takes the number of the message, the message ID, and the W param and L param, which like I said before, they their meaning depends on exactly what message you're processing. Now the meaning of the result code also depends on the message you're handling. But we don't have to worry about this usually because the, f the last thing we generally call uh, before returning and the value that we return is we return def window proc. So we invoke def window proc and it's a window proc so it has the same uh, function signature as our window proc. msg wp lp. There we go. So this will basically give us the same behavior as we got down here. So if I now replace this with our wind proc and I run it, we should see the same behavior. And indeed, we are our window is responding to messages, but it is not exiting the application when we close the window. Okay, so now we've got to add in that extra something something. We've got to add some extra behavior for the close message. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to add a switch in here. Uh, so we switch on the message ID and we want to check for WM underscore close. So Windows uh, defines macros for all the different message codes. So you don't have to remember numbers, you just have to remember these WM underscore names. Now for the close message, all we want to do is post a quit message to our message queue. And of course, uh, we're going to have the exit code be 69. So post quit message is a nice little helper function that just uh, posts a quit message to your message queue. And this 69 here is the return value that you would like the application to exit with, or the exit code. And we'll break here. Now you might be wondering why a switch? You're only looking for one thing. Why don't you just use an if? And the reason is, is because of course, in the future, we're probably going to be processing many different kinds of messages. Now. We handle the message, but we haven't handled it completely. We've just posted quit message. We also want the behavior uh, needed to actually destroy the current window. And we'll allow def window proc to destroy the window because we've seen it's already good at destroying the window. It just doesn't tell our application to quit. So we add this little behavior on top of what uh, def is already doing. And if we do this, we will see that if we close this, bam our application exits. We can look at the output and application has exited with code zero. Wait a minute. We wanted to exit with code 69. Why is it exiting with code zero? Well, of course, because down here we return zero when we should be returning the uh, whatever exit code was passed into post quit message. So what we should actually do here, because there are many cases, if get message is negative one, that means there was an error. If get message was zero, that means we have a quit message and we should return the, uh, the code in there. So what we should do here, get message returns a windows bool, we'll call it G result for get result. And note that this isn't a C++ bool type, it's actually just an int, but whatever. And what we want to do is we want to check to C. So we're going to capture G result when we call get message and we'll check to see whether that captured value is greater than zero. If so, we process. But if not, 
then we want to check to see what exactly that captured value was. So if g result is equal to negative 1, we'll just return negative 1, signaling we had an error with our uh, the get message function itself encountered an error. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to return message dot w param. We'll get rid of this because w param is going to be this code here. Now you may be saying, Chili, how did you know that? Well, of course, you're going to Google wm quit because that's the message that gets posted uh, when you quit out. And if you look at the Windows documentation here, you're going to see what w param and l param do for this message. We can see that l param is not used. w param is the exit code given in the post quit message function. So you Google these uh, these symbols here, these defined symbols, and you will get information about every message. You will understand what the parameters mean for every individual message. And if we run this bad boy, we'll close this one, application exits, and if we look at that return code, we've got a big old 69. Now everything is working as we expect. And there you go, we've got our first functioning window. Everything works as expected. Of course, the uh, the actual client region here looks a little weird. That's because we're not drawing it, so it just takes on whatever value was in that video memory when we created the window. But when we get on to Direct3D, we will of course be drawing to this part of our window. But that's going to about do it for this lesson. In the next video, we are going to explore other Windows messages and we are going to I'm going to show you guys how to handle keyboard and mouse input which is obviously very important for writing a game engine. Until then I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please click the like button it helps a lot and I will see you soon with some more hardware 3D.